Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Check the Post Nebraska Nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Today I'm joined by a special guest, former Nebraska kicker from the years 2014 to 2017. He actually holds a Nebraska freshman scoring record and most field goals made by a freshman with 15. Second in school history with 59 field goals made. Fourth in school history and points scored with 355 points. And he once made five field goals in one half versus Southern Miss. How you doing, Drew Brown? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you you're joining us. And, you know, obviously you had some success with kicking of the field goals. Obviously, Nebraska is not having said success at the moment. I'm going to share a couple of stats here. Nobody's going to enjoy these, but they are what they are. All right, so just this year alone, Nebraska special teams, they've missed eight field goals, missed four PATs. Uh, They've had three punts, travel less than 20 yards, give up a punt return for a touchdown, had a PAT block return for a touchdown, uh, have 30 yards, uh, 30 punt yard, 30 punt return yards in 10 games. And unfortunately, the special teams have directly cost Nebraska 37 points this season. And we've lost seven games this year by 42 points. So I think sometimes special teams gets overlooked. And punters and kickers, they maybe don't get as much respect as they they should because they have a big impact on the outcome of the game. So my question for you is what's going on with our kicking situation, Drew? What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, it's... It's so interesting to watch every week because it's the same, same story. And, you know, I don't pretend to think that I had a perfect career at Nebraska by any means. Um, you know, I had a lot of time with the four years where I experienced some downs and, and eventually some ups towards the last, you know, two and a half years of my career. But, you know, I, I can't speak to the returning statistics specifically, but, you know, kicking and punting, it's, I, 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 you can tell I'm at a loss for words. Um, you know, I kind of had a, some little discussion on Twitter with some some followers uh, on Saturday, and just you know, the the thing that you want to see out of your kickers and punters, obviously, is consistency. You know, and we saw that last year with Connor kicking, and you know, and the record wasn't what we wanted it to be, but you saw, you know, in a lot of those games, the points do end up making the biggest difference down the stretch. And we're seeing that especially this year, you know, and, and, um, you know, I, I just, I'm not exactly sure what the answer is, you know, at some, at some point, you know, you can blame coaching, you can, you know, do all that stuff. But at the end of the day, and it's just like with any other position, you know, the guys have to take it upon themselves to, you know, make the change, you know, do what they need to do in practice to, to be able to take that next step forward and ultimately win these games for, for their team. I mean, we saw it in the Ohio state game is a perfect example. You know, they had a perfect day kicking, uh, punting. They had, you know, a couple punts down inside the five, which puts some, some pressure on the Nebraska offense. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, just the, the players themselves need to, need to do something about it. Yeah. Ohio state was four, four kicking. We were one of three, obviously we lost by nine points. So there's a lot of field goals on both sides that, that more often than not went Ohio state's way. So I can't help but wonder because, And I've always said that certain sports in general are a huge part of it is mental. There's some sports that are more mental than others, like baseball, where it's such an individualistic sport at times, pitcher versus hitter, things of that nature. You've got so much time in between your at-bats to think about your last at-bat. I've always thought shooters can be streaky in basketball because it's a lot of it's mental. You get in a rhythm. And I've always thought punting and especially kicking, where everybody's watching, and it's not like it's one of those things you're all of a sudden are going to lose the ability to punt or kick. And you look at Connor Culp, he's clearly still got the physical ability that he had last year when he was the Big Ten kicker of the year. How much of this do you think is is mental at this point? Yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly. You know, all those guys on the roster, all the specialists on their roster, they clearly have the ability to kick at the Division One, kick or punt at the Division One level or else they wouldn't be on this team. Um you know, whenever you talk results wise, kicking and punting, it's the only other comparable position is really quarterback. You know, when they throw interceptions or incompletions, yeah. you know, it's hard not to blame a quarterback for an interception. It's hard not to blame the kicker for, you know, a missed kick. It's hard not to blame the punter for a bad punt. But, you know, and that, that really gets emphasized. I mean, you could have, you know, for example, on defense, you could have a, a corner blow a coverage and then the safety is able to, to, you know, make the play over the top and everything's all good. But with kicking, I mean, you either make or you miss the kick. And, and like you said, it's, it is a lot 
mental. Um, you know, that's to me, that's what separates the good kickers from the great ones. There's so many great kickers at the college level that could, you know, 100% make it in the NFL, but it's those ones that are able to have it physically, but, you know, take it to that next level mentally, which is what separates the good ones from the great ones. And, you know, I don't want to <laughs> act like I know, you know, what's going on in the, the players' heads right now, but I mean, it's got to be weighing pretty heavy on them, just, you know, the, the whole mental mental lapses that they've had. Now, you kind of mentioned it on Twitter. That's actually what, what sparked me reaching out to you about this interview, like kind of an entire position group. You know, you think if one kicker would struggle, you know, maybe another kicker could step in and have some success, but it seems to kind of be the group as a whole, and I know you don't have the answer for that, uh, but that's what kind of prompted me to reach out to you. And I have, I have, I'm admittedly, it's a dumb question. Okay, you're probably going to hear this and be like, "That's the dumbest question you've ever heard." Uh, but I, punting, kicking, not up my alley, not something I did well going into my senior year of high school. We had no nobody to kick field goals. I spent the entire summer trying to just be able to make PATs. At the end of it, I kicked ten the day before our first practice, and I made three. That's from 18 mm-hmm. yards away. So I'm pretty bad at it. But I have this question that I've always wanted to ask. Why can't kickers also punt the ball at the collegiate level and punters also kick the ball? Um, You know, because in high school you see them do it, but once you get to college in the NFL, you don't see that as much. So why why is that? You know, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, the difference in kicking and punting, you know, physically it obviously looks very different. Yeah, Kicking, you're kicking the ball from the ground. Punting, you're punting it while it's dropping in midair. Yeah. Um, the fundam- the fundamentals and the mechanics are much different. You know, the bet the better punters are usually a lot taller, have longer legs. The the better kickers are usually kind of you know not necessarily short, but you know more on the shorter side, kind of stockier. Um, the thing with punting is, I was never able to do it just from a physical standpoint. I could you know punt a ball, but not to the level of a Division One caliber. But there's so much of an emphasis on, you know, location, where you're putting the punt, you know, hang time on the punt, um, you know, and it just it's really, really hard to be very good at both. You know, there, there's got to be maybe four or five guys, just even in Division One college football right now that are doing both. And I think that speaks to not only the talent of of kickers and punters throughout the country in the in the high school ranks moving on to college, but just how difficult it really is to you know, put the, you know, punt the ball in the right spot. When we saw that in the Michigan State game, that's what it ended up costing us on that, that punt return. You know, the, the punter is supposed to punt it to the boundary or the sideline, you know, uh, you know the right or left sideline. He punts it down the middle of the field, they return it for a touchdown. So, you know, it, it's just little mistakes like that that, you know, it's it just makes it that much harder. You're, you're punting a ball while it's dropping from midair. So um, it, it's not the easiest thing to do, but, um, yeah, and I I don't pretend to know to know to say that I was even good at it, but um, but I've certainly been around those that are incredible at it, so I've seen it. That actually makes more sense to me now, especially when you talk about the bit different body types. Now that you mention it, and I think about it, punters do tend to be a little taller or lengthier, and the kickers tend not to be quite as tall or as lengthy. Now that I think about the guys that I've played with and seen in the past. It's almost like an offensive guard it tends to be shorter than an offensive mm-hmm. tackle in the offensive line. So that actually makes more sense to me. So I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I got a question for you, you know, and you, I'll leave it up to you how you want to answer it. Should not Nebraska just have a special teams coordinator, a guy who just coaches special teams and that's his sole job? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I've been asked that a lot the last couple of weeks. My opinion specifically is absolutely. Um, and we've seen this entire season for the most part, the difference in, all of the game, all 10 games, at least the seven that we've lost has been, you know, had special teams has had a massive part in that. And I'm not saying that I think Mike Dawson is a special teams uh, coordinator. I'm not saying he's not a great, you know, he's not great at doing that, but it's tough whenever he's coaching outside linebackers. It's, it's tough whenever he has to, you know, divvy up special teams, um, special teams duties. So my experience, um, three of my four years at Nebraska, we had, a dedicated special teams coordinator. I think that made me and the other specialists um, a lot better at what we did because we have someone there, you know, with, or with us during practice, you know, helping, helping us with drills, um, you know, things like that. And I'd I'd be willing to guess that a linebackers coach is not spending a ton of time during practice with the specialists. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't seen it, but you know, typically the offense and the defense gets a lot more, 
um, focus during practice, which is fine. But you know, at the end of the day, special teams is is a third of the game, and I'm sure you've heard that expression a lot. Yeah. And especially with the punt team, I mean that determines field position, which is king in in, in, in you know close games. So. Um, my opinion, yes, I think every team should have a special teams coordinator. Um, if not, just like a, a, a position specific kicking coach. Um, but I mean, that, that's just from my experience. And I've seen that, that the success that that, you know, the team reaps from, from that kind of a, kind of a position. You know, you actually, you make a great point because there's fundamentals and techniques to every position, to everything you do, regardless of what the sport is or what the position is within that sport. And if you don't, like Mike Dawson, you know, like you said, you haven't seen it. I haven't specifically watched what he does in special teams uh, recently at all, that's for sure. But I guarantee he's working on fundamentals and techniques with the linebackers. And if the kickers are over there kicking on their own, that's great. But, you know, maybe the technique isn't what it was, isn't what it needs to be or could be better. Or maybe sometimes you pick up bad habits along the way. That could actually, you know, be contributing to why, as a general whole, they're they're kind of struggling with kicking as far as punters, kickers, and just a, a group as a whole, that actually could be a huge contributing factor. And again, I'll repeat this: you know, special teams have directly cost us 37 points this season, and we've lost seven games by 42 points. They absolutely mm-hmm. are a third of the game. All right, so um, I know that you were you're really good friends with Sam Fultz. If you if you go to Drew's Twitter timeline, he's still got the pinned tweet uh, up there, a message to Sam. I didn't know if you felt comfortable with sharing some of your favorite memories or some of your favorite things about Sam since you knew him so well. Uh, I didn't know if you'd be comfortable, if there's a memory or just things in general you mind sharing with the fine folks at home about Sam. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's been well documented that, you know, for the people that did know Sam, he was arguably the great, you know, the greatest friend that anybody could have. Um, You know, he's obviously a hell of a of a punter and we saw that you know time in and time out throughout his career and you know it's crazy that the punting has never really recovered since since yep. his tenure at nebraska but yep. um you know the the lasting memory that i have or one of the many i guess but one that sticks out to me is um the summer i think it might have been the summer before he passed he traveled down with me to my hometown in texas whenever school got out for the semester in may and we you know, we got to go to a Rangers game. We got to tour AT and T Stadium. You know, he got to eat all the su- the good Southern cooking down here, and and um, you know, it, it says a lot. And I was, I think that was after my freshman year. It says a lot about you know a teammate to just pick up and give up, you know, a couple a week or so of, of the you know Division One football players' limited summer vacation to go down and, and you know meet my family and, and you know experience something that he may not have experienced before and. And just something, you know, a little, a little minute detail like that. But yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it's been well documented. He obviously was a hell of a punter, but in, you know, an even, even better person and, and just one of the best families that you ever meet. And, you know, I, I'm definitely very, very lucky to, to have a relationship with, uh, with Gerald and Jill, his parents and then his siblings still. But, uh, but no, one of the, one of the best dudes you have ever met. And, and I know a ton of people miss him dearly every single day. Yeah, anytime you hear someone talk about Sam, it's nothing but but great things. Um, I never had the opportunity to meet him. We did interact a few times via DM on Twitter, um, but yeah, you hear nothing but great things as far as the football aspect. Of, you're right; we haven't recovered in a, in a punting or kicking aspect really uh, since then. And you know, special teams used to be a strength in Nebraska. Hopefully, we can get back to that. But I appreciate you sharing that story. I appreciate your time, and uh, uh, thank you for joining the show. Not a problem, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right. Until next time, Husker Nation, go big red. And always remember, throw the bones. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.